First question is from 713 Clown. I've heard some trainers say that they are anti-plank due to them training bad posture. What is your opinion on that? I like this question. Who picked this? Mm, this I did. Oh, yeah. good, good question. Because this is, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I can I can defend either side here. Yeah. So um, I'm not a fan of the plank for most people either, unless I'm teaching it, right? So if I see, if I see my, I used to see trainers teaching it, right? That work for me all the most time. Most of them don't do it, right? And most of them don't. Most of them, it was just, it's just it's a very way. commonly misused yeah, exercise. It, it's an easy uh, kill five to 10 minutes with your clients, but not really do anything, Like right? That's really what you it see. It reminds me of when trainers, they, either they would do the Give plank. run laps. Or, or, they'd, or they'd run outside for laps, yeah. or they'd have them do the wall sits. Yes. Oh, it's yeah. like when you for, you have nothing left to do. So 100%. I got, I got 10 more minutes. It's totally reminds me. Total, top three lazy trainer exactly, moves. Yeah. Exactly what I think of right away. Now, that being said, uh, Sal did a great uh, YouTube video on our Mind Pump TV channel uh, about an active plank. And you should read the comments. There's all kinds of people that it flipped. Everyone flipped their lid because of mm -hmm. what he's teaching there. But uh, I stand behind what he talked about 100%. And that's where you do like more of a, a tilt with your pelvis in order to activate your abs and your core. So it looks like you kind of have this little bit of a, a crown or a rounded back, which to the average person looks like goes, that doesn't look right. I've seen these other planks where they look way more flat. But then the problem with that is almost everybody, I'd say 90% of the population has somewhat of an anterior pelvic tilt to where you know their their butt is kind of sticking and they have more of an excessive arch in their low back and then you go in a plank position and gravity is yeah. literally We're reinforcing those forces right in that spot exactly so uh, for that reason um i don't like the pa the plank generally speaking but if you train it like an active plank or like what sal taught on the youtube channel then I'm totally pro it. Yeah, I, I don't like when trainers say things like, um, I don't like that exercise because it trains this pattern. It depends on who you're training. Okay, so, okay, uh, could it reinforce bad posture on someone who's already got terrible posture, weak mid-back muscles, um, poor core stability, and they can't perform it properly? Yeah, of course. That means it's an inappropriate exercise for that person. Done properly and combined, because you're not just doing one exercise. If you're working out, you're not just doing planks. You know, I could also say don't bench press. That that's bad for bad posture too. Right, right. But you're not just bench pressing in your workout. You're doing rows and you're focusing on, you know, scapular mobility. And it depends on the individual that I'm training. Very rarely do I tell a client never do an exercise unless they can't perform it properly. They, they're not. They don't have enough mobility, enough stability. In which case. Will avoid the exercise, but if they can do it properly and it's part of a good program, um, it's much more complex than just looking at the exercise alone and saying this isn't good because this encourages you know whatever. In combination with other movements, a plank can be awesome. My favorite way to use a plank is if with advanced clients, I like to combine it with another exercise in a superset. So I like to do like a prone. I like to do a plank. And then move to like a physio ball crunch or vice versa. That can be real good. With uh, with beginner clients, it helps me teach them how to control their pelvis pelvic position. And nine out of ten times, they do them off their knees. Most people can't do they can't they don't have enough strength to control their pelvic position in a full plank. So I have them go down to the knees, and then we get them to squeeze their abs and control that position. Well, in, in that regard, I, I use the plank a lot of times as like a transitionary type of exercise for people that don't have the type of strength, especially in an extended plank position where, you know, I want them to do push-ups. And a lot of people can't maintain the proper uh, form there and, and have their core drawn in and everything else activated to support while they're doing uh, push-ups. So I find value in that in terms of slowing down and really emphasizing just the stability portion of, you know, and how they should should be feeling it and where they should be feeling it uh, as, a, as a teaching type of an exercise. But, you know, there's there, there's places for it. It's all in how you program it for sure. And, uh, you know, like I, I do like the the version that you teach on YouTube much better as, as opposed to just uh, going for the flat uh, plank that's going to reinforce, you know, a lot of uh, positions there in the lower back. Well, I think that's the problem that, that some trainers have with it is when you understand what the purpose of the exercise is, and then you see how most people do it, you go like, okay, that's defeating the purpose. Mm -hmm. So then it makes it sound seem like, oh, that's a worthless exercise, or you shouldn't even do it because it, like Sal said, it reinforces these bad patterns. 
But yeah, if you if you learn how to do it properly, then it doesn't defeat the purpose whatsoever. So it can be a phenomenal exercise. It's just that most people do it wrong, and it's harder to take a client who you haven't you haven't really taught. We talked about this on the podcast the other day about like training people and you know from what do we consider uh, intermediate beginner or advanced right like as far as like where their skill level is and if i if i have a client on an exercise like that it's really hard to cue somebody how to get into that position they're going to default to like their bad patterns right away so that's where it's challenging if you're a good coach though and you give good cues to get them in there which is again why i like that video that Sal does because that 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 cue is teaching them what they need to kind of engage the entire time. And once that person learns an active plank really well, they can do a more traditional flat plank because they know what muscle they're trying to engage. Mm -hmm. Versus showing someone here, get down in a plank and then and just then, hold it. Yeah, and then just hold it. You know, because then they're just holding it with their hip flexors. They're just and right. then that's why they can do it for nine minutes. You know, in that position because they're not really activating their core.